Well, the commercial space economy is on track to reach $1 trillion by 2040, according to Citigroup. Colorado-based Sierra Space is at the heart of that, with ambitions to build out a new commercial space station in partnership with Blue Origin. Its space plane, Dream Chaser, recently completed testing at NASA and is scheduled to launch into orbit later this year. For more on that, uh, we are joined by CEO Tom Weiss, who is in studio today. And Tom, I'm sorry I can't join you in New York, but it is great to talk to you. Let's start by talking about where Dream Chaser stands right now. What's the timeline and what's the mission? Yeah, uh, first of all, just thank you for having us uh, today. Uh, Look forward to having the discussion. Dream Chaser, we're very excited about Dream Chaser. We've made tremendous progress coming out of seven years of development on the program. Um, We're finishing up testing uh, with NASA uh, out at uh, their test facility in Ohio. Uh, About two or three weeks from now, we'll ship Dream Chaser to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, We'll finish up some testing at Kennedy Space Center, integrate it on the Vulcan rocket, and we're excited it'll have its first mission to the ISS later this year. Uh, This is the only space plane, as I understand it, uh, capable of landing on a commercial runway. What are the use cases as you see it? Well, the way we see it, I mean, we think about really since the 1960s, every A science experiment or human being that's come back to Earth from space, even today, is still landing in a capsule in the ocean. Um, And yet the the science is very sensitive. Um, We think changing and revolutionizing the way that we bring things back from space, both humans and cargo, and landing it back at a commercial runway will again uh, it completely accelerate the new space economy. I mean, imagine being able to create biotech hubs around the world so that we can take off from Japan, land in Japan. Same thing in the Middle East. Uh, it's, it's really incredible for us to think about just bringing things back to a commercial runway. We spent a lot of time and in, in, in technology associated with being able to land Dream Chaser at any runway that a commercial aircraft can land. And we think that's going to create a new economy around being able to do that. Uh, That's very, you know, we focused uh, around uh, getting Dream Chaser to be able to land in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, out in New Mexico, of course, Kennedy Space Center, Vandenberg. Uh, We've been doing a lot of work around OIDA in Japan, and you can can see us uh, continue uh, to really uh, uh, form relationships with airports so we can bring Dream Chaser back to commercial runways. Let's talk a bit more about uh, those business opportunities you just pointed to. Uh, Dream Chaser initially is going to be supplying to the International Space Station, but you're also building out a commercial space station in partnership with Blue Origin. Um, You know, it's been so many decades where we're so used to seeing one space station, a place of cooperation between countries, and yet here we are looking into the future where you've got not just competing space stations between countries, but also commercial space stations as well. Um, how does that open up the business opportunities within the space economy? Yeah, what we see in the commercial space station is the opportunity to create brand new research and development facilities for biotech, industrial tech, energy tech. Uh, we believe that the next big breakthrough products in oncology, longevity, industrialized components like glass will be produced in, in low Earth orbit. This is, uh, we're transitioning from you know, decades of, of government-run space stations with just a handful of government-trained astronauts to the full commercialization of low-Earth orbit. Um, if you think about the biotech industry today, terrestrial markets, uh, most of that work is being done in what's called contract research organization, contract manufacturing organizations. Uh, part of the work that Sierra Space is doing is producing the first CRO in space for biotech the first contract manufacturing facilities in space for industrial tech. And we think that's gonna create, we believe, probably the most profound industrial revolution and grow that space economy, as you mentioned, at well over a trillion dollars by 2040. Uh, Tom, you talk specifically about biotech. Why is that environment, the microgravity, so conducive to development there? Because you can actually build really pure protein crystallizations. And that protein crystallization is what is the foundation of being able to create new and novel drugs. Uh, We think a lot about um, being able to greatly expand adult stem cells that can take on a number of human conditions. Um, We're very focused on being able to print 3D organs in space in microgravity that you can't do on the surface. 
So the combination of work that we're doing uh, in oncology and longevity using microgravity, uh, because of that unique environment, we can do things specifically around crystallization of protein structures that you can't do on Earth. Uh, the same thing we can do in inorganic, so industrialized glass. The purity of the glass you can build in orbit is very differentiated than on, on the ground. Um, finally, Tom, Sierra Space is a privately held company right now. You've been very vocal about your ambitions to go public eventually. I heard you recently say um, you'll do this when the market looks like it'll give Sierra Space the right credit for valuation. What what is that? What what does that look like? And could we potentially see an IPO this year? Yeah, you know, uh, again, we uh, we spun out from a, a great company, the, one of the world's greatest private defense companies, Sierra Nevada Corporation, three years ago. Uh, we spent the last three years de-risking our technology stack, de-risking our capital structure, de-risking our business plan. We have a significant, wide, diverse portfolio of products and revenue streams. Um, and so we think about uh, as the private markets, now looking at the public markets, uh, we'll time that right. Um, but it provides us a lot of optionality around access to additional capital as we think about growing the company over the next uh, decade. And so the timing of that is uh, we'll look at the public markets. You know, we're valued as a private company at 5.3 billion. Uh, we've raised $1.7 billion in capital through our Series A and B. Uh, we're well uh, capitalized. Uh, but now we look at the public markets over the next 12, 18 months, and we'll make a decision on what the right timing for us is. Tom Weiss, uh, CEO of Sierra Space, really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much. For oh, your time. thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate it.